Welcome back. So the goal of this flight was to try and um, you know replicate the previous flight with the same type of profile, and then be able to do a pretty apples to apples comparison of uh, you know how the uh, improvements to the cooling um, you know impacted everything. So that's what I was trying to do. It wasn't going to be a super long flight. I think 20 minutes or something altogether. And uh, so in the last flight, I pushed the engine a little bit harder, I would say, just in terms of the climb, and then I only climbed up to about 2,300 feet, as you might recall. Um, so this one, I was going to just you know, climb up to whatever was comfortable, but you know, push the engine power about the same as I'd done in the last one, and pretty much uh, immediately I could see the temperatures weren't going up here as I uh, was climbing out, so I felt pretty comfortable that things were going to work out fine. And the one thing I did, and you'll see in the logs coming up, I noticed that uh, you know the uh, engine temperature hadn't even got up to the temperature that I'd set for the thermostat to come on yet, or at least the coolant temperature hadn't, which was you know around about 170. So I actually uh, turned the heater off briefly and then turned it back on in order to get that to trigger. Red two, two up to 3283. Have a safe flight. Actually, I'll just be orbiting. Um to the east of the field up here, probably would be to about 4,000 feet, so I'll just stay on the frequency 2 tanker dog now. We're at 2 Delta, roger. Yeah, so by turning off that front coolant loop, uh, the coolant temperature went up um, fairly quickly, as again, you'll see in the logs, um, and, and the thermostat kicked in, but then, of course, I was like, well, I want to keep the front coolant loop because I want this to be very similar to the previous flight with, with the same parameters. So I turned it back on again, and then of course um, that dropped the temperature, and then of course the thermostat closed up back up again. But that's fine. Uh, it didn't take too much longer um, before it kicked back open again, and uh, you know that it was uh, working as a plan. Yeah, And you can see I pulled the prop back um, a couple of times to get the engine RPM down to about sort of 3200 and I pulled the power back just a little bit so I'm at, I think I was at about 80-90% here and you can see the fuel flow there is showing uh, 17 gallons an hour so I actually put it back up again because it was performing so well. Uh, and there was still more headroom to um, you know, run the engine at a higher power setting or even a uh, you know, faster prop uh, setting to climb better but as I said I wanted to try and uh, emulate the previous uh, flight so I kept a sort of similar profile uh, but it, actually I averaged I think over the, the five minutes of climb to 3,000 feet I averaged about 600 feet a minute which is not bad considering that there's still more uh, power available. And you'll see that I, the highest that the oil temps got to was uh, 237, which was totally reasonable because, you know, before, uh, well, you'll see on the previous flight, I think it was 10 degrees warmer than that. And then the other thing was, you know, as soon as I um, pulled the power back just a little bit or leveled off just a little bit immediately, um, the cooling was really improving. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is, obviously there's probably some more little tweaks and stuff that could be made to improve it a little bit more, but this has made you know a major change, and I don't think I'm going to have any problems uh, climbing up to higher altitudes at you know at, you know decent climb power settings, and instead of just sort of kind of babying it up there. So as I said in uh, a little bit earlier there in this video that the previous flight I think I got up to 2300 feet because it was just sort of you know quick and I was just like well I'm not getting the cooling and uh, this one I got up to 3500 feet and you know with a cooler engine and you know a quicker climb and I mean it was just better all around so that was good and uh, for somebody or there was a couple of people I guess in the comments of the last video wondered if I just put that 
and then you cooling outlets on the cowling on one side. Now it's on both sides. That so would be silly to put it on just on one side. Uh, so um, yeah, there's and with respect to uh, drag, I think potentially I've reduced drag if um, if the sco inlet scoop was creating drag because there was back pressure on it, and I've now like removed that by creating a nice big vacuum at the front of that in inlet scoop then overall I may have reduced um, the, the total drag on the aircraft. So, but you know, without um, having you know, some good measurements, that's just, an, uh, you know, estimation. And two tanker drivers, uh, right midfield, uh, midfield or right down, point to three five. We're taking a delta, I got you. Copy. So I went around a couple of times and then um, you know, called Tower and just said I want to come in and land, and that, that way I would have you know a pretty matching profile to the previous flight. And uh, did a similar approach to landing. And uh, I was watching the temperatures here, and you'll see in the logs there, um, just coming down to, to sort of crazy cool numbers. Whereas before on the previous flight, um, the temperature was just kind of being maintained; it wasn't really dropping down. At least the oil temperature wasn't. So uh, you know, all in all, I think this is a big win. And uh, you know now I can move on to you know doing some of the other things for the 40 hours of testing. You know doing some better climb performance stuff, and then uh, you know determining what VX and VY is and best glide and all that stuff. And uh, obviously you know cruise um, power and speed and that sort of stuff um, numbers as well. I mean I've got the whole booklet that I need to work through, but. I haven't really, really been able to do much because I've just been working constantly on trying to get this cooling sorted out and it's pointless, you know, logging a whole bunch of numbers and then all of a sudden making a huge um, performance improvement and then having to do it all again. So, um, yeah, now I'll be able to move on with that. And it had been fairly windy earlier in the day, so I did the usual thing here and waited until you know five o'clock before I was flying. And then you know by the time I'm coming into land here, most of the wind is gone. And you know the wind was all from the north anyway, so it was favoring me landing here on uh, three five. Short final runway three five. Delta, turn right one able, contact ground one off. Right one able and then hold short now over the ground. Point seven two tank delta. Yeah, so I was pretty happy with that landing. And uh, even the takeoff was good, I believe. I'm looking back at the videos in detail. I got off the ground um, this time, you know, for some reason, before I even hit the two thousand foot mark. I think it was about nineteen hundred feet. So it may have been because I had the headwind or whatever, but um, I think that's the best I've ever had it off the ground. And I might have had the nose up trimming a little bit more than normal because um, it seemed to rotate, you know, all on its own a little bit. Uh, anyway, so that's this flight. Let's take a look at the engine logs and see how they turned out. All right, I'll jump right in and show you um, not just the flight, but the comparison to the previous flight. So, you know, up here, the throttle settings pretty much the same. I tried to keep it there. I did drop it down a little bit lower here briefly, 82, and then um, you know put it back up to 89 here. So I'm running a little bit higher than the previous time at 85. 
So it's higher all through here, um, you know, and, and even up here, sort of still at 89 or 88.9 and the other time uh, 80, so, you know, 8.9 more. So I kept it higher all the way up here, then about the same here and about the same there. And then I basically went lower because I was starting to do my descent at this point or leveled out. So keep in mind that, you know, this, this time I climbed to 3,500. Last time I only climbed to about 2,300. Um, so with respect to the fuel flows there, that is obviously driven by the engine uh, RPM. So you can see the engine RPMs there, fairly similar. Just, you know, here it was a little bit higher, but for the most part, it was fairly similar. So I was, you know, setting the prop about the same amount. And then down here on the cooling, so on the previous flight, I turned the heater loop on a bit earlier because I had already, the engine had already warmed up to, uh, you know, 150 there. And I usually like to turn that on if I'm sitting on the ramp and there's someone on short final or whatever, I turn it on just ahead of time just to keep the engine oil below 150. But to, um, on this particular flight, I didn't have that problem. I was 142 here. And by the time I actually was ready to roll, I was finally at 151. So I just turned it on there. So that's what that delay is for there and then I'm on the climb out and then you know I've got an indicator light on the panel there now that tells me when that thermostat is open and that's down here um, when this goes high that means it's open and I looked and I was like oh the thermostat hasn't come on yet and I was looking and I was like oh yeah well obviously because my coolant temperature is so low because I turned the heater loop on it was only 62 degrees there and, uh, you know, the oil temperature, engine oil temperature is coming up 197. So I thought, oh, I'll just turn it off real quick. So I turned it off. And then, of course, um, because the thermostat shut, the uh, temperature of the coolant running back to the engine was heated up. So that was already up at 192 there. And, of course, that kicked the, um, that kicked the thermostat on here. Actually, sorry, it was 175. So that kicked the thermostat on there briefly. And then I was like, yeah, I want to have it back the same way as before. So I turned the heater loop um back on the front loop back on of course that drove the temperature back back down and of course the thermostat went back off or closed back up and so then you know i kept kept climbing out but as you can see here once um the engine oil hit that sort of 219 degrees 218 degrees here compared to the previous flight and you know with parameters very similar uh, all of a sudden because the coolant was so much lower temperature you see here and obviously because you know my radiator and stuff is working better um, even without the thermostat on, I, uh, the thermostat open, you know, I had better cooling all the way through here. So, you know, that, I think that's largely in part from having the larger cowling openings. And so that was all the way across here. I managed to keep the oil temps, you know, here 235 and the maximum it got to there was 238. Uh, whereas in the previous flight, the maximum it got to there was 247. Uh, that's right there. And so then, of course, um, you know, the coolant temperature is coming up. I've got it set for, I think, one, just under 170. So, yeah, it's 166. So, of course, the thermostat opens up there. And then, you know, uh, immediately that starts driving the, the oil temp down. So even though the coolant temp is still rising there, the oil temp is coming down because you're getting more, more flow there, I guess. Um, and of course, you know, I think at this point I'd also leveled out and you can see how much extra cooling I'm getting just by, um, you know, being leveled out. Um, temperatures are coming down and down, whereas on the previous run there, even at a lower altitude, you can see the temperature there, the oil temp basically stayed level. It's, it's there 247 there and all the way down here, it's still 245, whereas on this one, you know, it's 237, 238. And then, you know, all the way down here, it's come down to to 205 I mean really low so uh, yeah it's really really good so that means if I had to do a go around at this point um, I'm starting off with you know nice cool temps here and uh, I don't think I'd have any problems uh, climbing out and especially given that you know I'm, I'm happy to take the oil temp to 250 on a climb if I need to um, and only taking it to 238 with a fairly aggressive climb here is pretty good so uh, in the ambient temperature you this red line here, this is the one that there's, um, the sensor is just below the radiator. So what the heat of the air coming through the radiator, um, as you can see there, start, started out at 60 degrees outside. And then, you know, once I, once the radiator started circling, uh, 
some air through it and getting some heat coming through it um, or circling some coolant through it. The temperature comes up there, but it's really good actually. This this used to go to you know one one ten or one twenty in the air, and now it's staying below a hundred. So um, that means I'm getting much better airflow, much more airflow coming through there. And again, that's because of those outlets on the cowling pulling a lot more air through there. So that's a win there. So um, yeah, I mean, there's probably some other things to be gleaned from here. The temperatures here uh, on the um, coming through the intercooler dropping there that the delta between the orange and the green line there fairly decent 120 degrees there i mean i think it could be better there if i had a fan but i don't really have a configuration yet where i can have a fan pulling air through that intercooler but you know either way i think it's uh i think it's pretty decent so uh, anyway that's the logs i won't bore you too much more on that so exciting i think i've got my cooling um you know under control here probably can still make some minor improvements, but overall I think it's good. So that's gonna be this video. Thanks again for watching and tune in for the next one and see what I have for you. Cheers. Cheers.